All right, back on the morning drive on this Wednesday morning. 2411059 is our number, brought to you by Valasta Toyota. Of course, the uh, Florida primary election last night, Mitt Romney winning decisively on the minds of uh, many of our listeners and, uh, of course, uh, many Georgians this morning. And I'm sure on the minds of many of those in Washington as well, including uh, our own Senator Saxby Chambliss, who joins us this morning. Senator, how are you? Doing well, Chris. Hope you're doing fine this morning. We're doing great. Thanks for joining us this morning. And, uh, sure. Let me ask you before we ask some some of the things that you are uh, have going on in Washington. Uh, I know that folks in Washington are uh, attuned to the primary election. Obviously, well, what did you think about Florida last night? Any surprises? Well, certainly it mirrored what uh, the polls were showing it uh, over the weekend, and you know, just like Newt Gingrich had a big turnaround in South Carolina, he and Romney went from about ten points up to. But 10, 11 points down, uh, Gingrich has done the same thing in Florida. Uh, and what that says to me is that folks have not made up their minds early in any of these primaries, and, um, you know, nothing's a done deal here until it's till the end of the uh, primary season. We tend which to- is good for us in Georgia because uh, Brian Kemp, Secretary of State, made a calculated decision that we ought to have our primary on Super Tuesday versus uh, another couple of options that he had, and now we'll be a player in that, and I suspect Newt's going to do very well in Georgia. So, you know, this thing's going to continue. And there's been some thought uh, to the contrary, saying that, well, if Georgia had their primary earlier because we have so much focus on Florida and, and of course, uh, Iowa, South Carolina, New Hampshire, because they have the early primaries, but you still think, regardless of the fact that it's going to come on Super Tuesday with many others, that Georgia will still have a say in this process? Yeah, I, I think with that question, Will, and the, the options that we had for earlier weren't really good options, and I've forgotten the details of it, but um, I remember talking with Brian about it, and and uh, now, though, um, uh, what's going to happen is you're going to see the top uh, couple of guys, Romney and Gingrich, concentrating on states that they think they're going to do well in so that they'll either do really well in those states or or they'll spend some time in other Super Tuesday states where they may, may need to shore up some sport to try to not do too bad. Uh, so I... I think we're uh, I think we're poised to have a say whatever happens in Georgia. And let me ask you: We won't talk all about the uh, primary season, but I do want to ask you one more question about it, and that is that you know there's been a lot of talk about um, the fact that Rick Santorum and Newt Gingrich in the race at the same time, and I guess to a degree Ron Paul kind of splits up that conservative part of the vote, and that benefits Mitt Romney. Uh, do you see that? Do you feel if one of those candidates, uh, and I guess really we're talking about Rick Santorum, if he got out of it and would most of those go to Newt Gingrich? Is that hurting both of those candidates to divide that factor, or do you believe that's a, a big deal? Well, I know that's the common wisdom out there, but there's an interesting article in the Washington Post this morning that, uh, that said two things uh, of significance for Romney. One is, on exit polling, seven out of ten Florida Republican voters identified themselves as supporters of the Tea Party. That mean they're Tea Party members, but support the Tea Party. Secondly, and um, obviously Romney won those um, in a significant way. Uh, secondly, um, exit polling shows that those voters who said they voted for Santorum said overwhelmingly, like uh, 70% plus, said that if they had not voted for Santorum, they would have voted for Romney. So I don't think that what the pundits um, uh thought might happen if Rick got out that uh, all of those votes would go to new. So, you know, there again, it's um, um, uh, we voters are, um, uh, have our own way of thinking, and uh, in spite of what other people try to get in our heads about, uh, uh, voters are, they think they're, they have their own way of thinking. Uh, let's talk about some of the things going on in the Washington, of course, as a member of the Senate Armed Services Committee. Uh, defense is a always a big issue, no matter if it's an election year, non-election year, whatever it is, it's always big. And certainly uh, here in Georgia with the uh, many wonderful military bases that we have, and of course Moody Air Force Base right here, that's always uh, something that you're always working on. Yeah, absolutely. And Moody, boy, what a special place out there, and what great sport um, Lowndes County and and by us to give to that base, and that's always been a key to us during the rounds of BRAC that, um, that, that we've struggled through. Um, we know that significant cuts are coming. We knew we've known this for a year now. 
They're actually a little bit higher than what we had anticipated. It's going to be about $500 billion over 10 years. Defense Department made uh, an announcement the other day where they gave some detail. We're going to have a classified briefing this morning from the Department of Defense about the specific details of those spending reductions. And, you know, Moody's going to take some hits. Every base uh, in, in every state's going to take some hits. Uh, we know we're losing a few civilian jobs at Moody. It, um, it's not as big, maybe, as what it could have been. But it's still uh, uh, any loss of job um, at any of our installations is not good. But it is a fact that we've got to make spending reductions at the Defense Department, just like we do other departments. The other thing that I would mention is that um, Secretary Panetta stated the other day that he's going to request two additional rounds of BRAC, and that will be in 2013-2015. I tell you, this is uh, BRAC is an ugly process, and while I do support the process that the Secretary is going through, uh, I, am not, um, I am not so sure we need another round of BRAC. We can achieve spending reductions in other areas, rather than base closure. We had a massive closure in 2005. Thought we had uh, cleaned up all the areas that needed to be cleaned up. So we're a long ways away from having another round of BRAC, even if they do come back and request one. Well, I hope so. And that's obviously, uh, we don't want to see that at all here. And, and we know how important it is here. I also want to ask you real quick, because you are also the vice chair of the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence. And as we go through this presidential process and the vetting of candidates and talk about the importance of uh, being a strong nation and, and keeping ourselves safe from those who want to do us harm, how and I know you can't speak to this specifically, but uh, in a general sense, uh, are we in okay okay position now? I mean, I know there are still people out there. Obviously, we see it in the news all the time. But uh, are we in a general sense, you know, safer than we were ten years ago, or uh, there's still no work that needs to be done there? We had a worldwide threats hearing yesterday, which is the one open intelligence hearing that we have every year. And uh, we had all the major players there. The head of the, the DNI was there, head of the CIA, the FBI, the DIA, and the other agencies that participate in the gathering of intelligence and, and make us a safer country. And the kind of initial comment I made to all of them uh, was that after September 11, I, along with Jane Harmon, a, a Democrat from California, headed up the uh, Intel House Intel Subcommittee on Terrorism and Homeland Security, and we did a review of the facts leading up to September 11, and we were extremely critical in our report of the information sharing between agencies. And the one thing you can say now, Chris, is that these guys and the men and women under them have done a really amazing job of breaking down these firewalls and sharing information. And when you look back at the review of 2011, which we did yesterday, you know, we took out bin Laden, we took out Anwar al we we had some huge domestic um, uh, breakups of uh, potential terrorist activity. All of that occurred because of the information sharing between our agencies literally around the world, not just here domestically. So we're, uh, we're in much better shape today, but the world is still a dangerous place. There's still a lot of people around the world who get up every morning trying to think of ways they can kill and harm Americans, and our men and women in uniform doing a great job, but also our men and women who put their life in harm's way in the intelligence community are doing a great job. Senator Saxby Chambliss joining us this morning on the morning drive. We have a couple more minutes. Uh, Senator, quickly, a couple of questions. The, one of the things that our callers have been talking about this morning is how much compromise do we need in Washington? We know it's a very uh, partisan place, and America, quite honestly, is a very partisan place. So, and, of course, you were uh, as a part of the Gang of Six, and that was talked about a lot, working with Democrats. A lot of callers say, you know what, we want to stand up for our own values. We don't want to compromise. We don't want to give uh, too much or anything away. It, how does that work in Washington? Do we need more compromise when you talk about the two parties, or is there a, a fine line that you draw there that uh, you don't want to go over? Well, if you compromise on principle, then you may as well come home. And um, I've always believed in finding not compromise, but finding common ground. 
as opposed to compromising, and uh, I'll never compromise principles uh, such as raising taxes or other conservative values that um, uh, folks in Georgia possess and I possess. But this country's in trouble, Chris. We're in serious trouble. If, if Europe were not at the center stage from an economic crisis, America is the country that would be talked about because we are in serious, serious trouble. We owe now in excess of $15 trillion, and it's headed straight up. Uh, we've got to get our arms around that debt, and, and that means this is not a Republican issue, not a Democratic issue. It's one of these American issues that's got to be solved, and it has to be solved by finding that common ground. And the time to do it, uh, time to solve any major issue, Chris, is in a divided government. That's why I worked so hard last year to try to reach that common ground, uh, because if we've got the White House, we've got the House and the Senate, unless we got 60 votes in the Senate, which will be very, very difficult, then the Democrats will be in lockdown mode, and it's going to be difficult to get get things done uh, in that respect, even though we're better off having the Senate, obviously. Mm -hmm. But uh, when we did welfare reform, when we balanced the budget, when we achieved some major uh, pieces of legislation, it was when we had a divided government, and and that's just usually the case. But uh, compromise is is not an in vogue word in Washington for all the right reasons. But finding common ground is the right thing to do. And you just have to obviously be careful that when you put your principles out there that you stick by them. And if you stick by them, you can still find ways to find that common ground. Um, do you plan to make an endorsement as the uh, Republican candidates for the presidency? No. I, you know, I, obviously endorsements don't mean a whole lot. Uh, Nikki Haley endorsed Mitt Romney, and he got his clock cleaned in <laughs> South Carolina. Uh, Newt is my friend. He's uh, been a mentor, and, and I think the world of him. Uh, I know Romney very well also, and Rick Santorum and I served together for uh, 15 years. So, I mean, I... I know all these guys. Ron Paul, I know well. Served with Ron for eight years in the House. Uh, they're all good men, and as I've said all along, I want the primary uh, to run its course. I'm for whoever can beat Obama in November because it's critical that we win the White House this time. We we don't need another four years of, of uh, this current administration. So whoever comes out of the primary, I'm going to be uh, front and center ready to travel the, the, the country with them to ensure that they win in November. As it stands right now, last question, as it stands right now, uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, what kind of a chance uh, does that have to happening of uh, either or any of the four Republican candidates beating Barack Obama in November? I think um, uh, whoever comes out of the primary has got a 50-50 chance. Oh. I, mean, I, I find so much... Um, uh, anger around the country at the way this country is being run, and that anger is directed at Congress and it's directed at the White House. And there are good reasons why that that anger is is uh, being exhibited around the country. And I think it's um, it's going to be a um, uh, rough and tumble general election leading up to November, but uh, I do think whoever our nominee is stands at at least a 50-50 chance of winning. Senator Saxby Chambliss, we appreciate your time so much, and uh, we'll try to have you back later this year and ask you the real important question of who's going to win uh, Region 1-5, 6A. Hey, there you go. That's uh, (laughs) You're right. That's where the serious comments come about. (laughs) Well, listen, Senator, we always appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us this morning. Okay, Chris. Good to be with you. Have a good day. Senator Saxby Chambliss, uh, again, he is the uh, on the Senate uh, Armed Services Committee as well as the on the Intelligence Committee, the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence. So, uh, and that's some serious stuff that he's involved with. And uh, as we talk about, are we a safe America? Yes, we are safer. We're never totally safe. We'll take a break and come right back. More of the Morning Drive coming up right after this. You're listening to News Talk 105.9, and this is WVGA.